Hello guys, my name is Daniel and welcome to the first of many video tutorials on how to use Universal Fighting Engine, a toolkit developed to help developers make their own 2.5D fighting game. In this tutorial, I'll be teaching you how to set up the hitboxes in your own characters. And for this video, I'll be using a character provided by Jay Ballman. So let's start. You can have access to any of UFE editors by clicking on Window and then UFE. As you can see, I already have all the editors open here. You can arrange them any way you like. With the inspector selected, click on your own character model. A model file doesn't necessarily have to have any default animation, but for the hitbox setup, I recommend having your character at a pose that allows you to see the full body at a 90 degree Y rotation. You will see Y in a minute. To create a new character file, under project click create the new FE character file. Now let's fill these description boxes. Most of these variables are not being used by the current GUI scripts available, but you can set your own scripts and use these variables located at the core class. You can read more about coding with UFE by accessing ufe3d.com. If you're using UFE's GUI scripts, also make sure you have the portrayal file set, as the character selection screen requires them. You can find file examples under the demo character folder. You can also use any of the sound files available in this build. A special thanks to Aaron Victoria for providing us with some of these samples. Now let's start with what really matters here, the hitbox setup. Notice that just dragging my model here won't work. That's because we first must create a prefab and attach the hitbox script to it. To create a prefab, first drag the model to the hierarchy panel. It will automatically create the game object. Now we must attach the hitbox script. If you're using UFE source, you'll find this script at scripts slash hitboxscript.cs. For all other versions, hitbox script is located under plugin slash ufe.dll. Once you drag the script to the inspector, drag the game object back to the project window. It will create a prefab. Now that it's saved, just delete the game object from the hierarchy as we won't be needing it anymore. Now, for organization purposes, let's also rename these files so we can better locate ourselves. Now, we can finally drag the prefab to the character editor. Here you will find two subsections, transform and hitboxes. Transform is the default component for every game object. Under the character editor, use it to align your character to the default viewer. As for most cases when importing characters, if your imported character is too small, you can also set the scale here. Try matching up the scene view, default camera angle, as it has been set to follow a standard measurement throughout UFE. As an example here, I'll be setting this character to a scale of 10. I also need to set the Y rotation to 90, or any number close to it. This is important so the character can turn correctly when facing the other way. Having your model with a default pose that lets you see its full body at this rotation should also come in handy now, as you will have a much easier time setting up those hitboxes. Notice this big yellow circle. This is the ground mass. This stops characters from overlapping one another when they are knocked down regardless of the hitboxes. This can be added in the physics options right below. Let's create our first hitbox. Hitboxes are used to tell UFE in a projected 2D field where each part of this character is, as well as being used as a hurt box during active frames, which we will cover in another video. Make sure you classify the right body part to the right bone in your character, as it will be used as a reference when creating moves. You should now see a small yellow circle in the scene view. Use radius and offset controls to change its size and position. Once you're used to these controls, creating the other hitboxes should be rather simple. Don't worry about overlapping these boxes. The important thing here is to cover as much of the character as possible as you try matching the closest bone to the represented body part.
High and low hitboxes can trigger different hit animations, setting this character basic move depending where an attack strikes. I personally like setting the upper torso of a humanoid character also as a low hitbox, as some low attacks may end up striking the upper torso as well. There are three different types of collisions, body collider, represented by the yellow circle, hit collider, represented by the green circle, and no collider, represented by the white circle. Body colliders react to any kind of collisions. Use these to determine the mass of your character. Opponents cannot overlap these boxes. Hit collider, the green hit boxes, detect hit, but do not register mass. Opponents can overlap these boxes. No colliders, represented by the white hitboxes, have no collision. Use these for body parts that are not considered hitboxes, but can register hurt boxes if needed. Remember to apply the changes once you're done. Unlike other features of UFE, hitboxes do not save automatically. If you find yourself lost at any time during development, remember you can always click on the question marks next to each option group. Each option links to their respective live docs page, so you're never lost. Here, for example, we can read more about the hitbox system, where you can also read other details not covered by this tutorial. A special thanks to Jay Bowman for letting me use his character. If you want to know more about UFC, visit the link below. There, you can also vote for upcoming tutorial videos. Thanks for watching!